Hello, everyone, and let's get cracking with our investigations again. We're moving now on to the methodology, which is the second stage of your investigation. You've probably now written, you've collected your data, and you've probably written your introduction with your hypothesis and aims. Let's get on to the methodology. This is the last stage before we actually get into the analysis, the big bit. Now, if you look at this wordle that's on here, and you just take a moment just to pause this video and study some of the words which are in this methodology, would you do that now, please? Okay, thank you. What you'll probably notice from this is these are very scientific types of words, and this is what you need to be in your methodology. Your introduction gives you a chance to be passionate, to speak with a real passion about your topic. Your methodology doesn't give you that. Your methodology is very precise. Look at the word method. It's the method that you're actually undertaking. And for your methodology, I want you to think about two things. So you'll need your Word document for this. So you can add your notes and you're going to want to think about what I'm telling you it means, plus also the relevance to your investigation. The two things you're thinking about, firstly, data collection. Secondly, linguistic methods. That's what your methodology is made up of, your data collection and your linguistic methods. Let's talk about data collection first of all. And let's start first of all with the obvious thing you need to write about. How did you collect your data? For many of you, this is going to be the case of I watched something on YouTube and transcribed what people were saying. Or it could be that you found a collection of adverts online, that you researched a particular topic. Some of you might even go into corporate studies and things like that to get some really interesting data sets and lists. Tell us how you collected it. Secondly, why did you choose to collect the data in this way? Why was that your reason for your approach? Now, for many of you, this is going to be the case where you're going to say there was a typed version of this data, a script of this data somewhere, but instead of going with a script, you decided to listen to it and transcribe it yourself so you could capture all the paralinguistic features such as pauses, hesitations, fillers, repetitions, etc., raising, intonation, things like that. So tell us about why you chose to collect your data that way. If there are scripts available for it, why did you choose to ignore the script and go for your own transcription? And I do hope you did ignore the script and go, went for your own transcription as well. It's a better thing to do. Are there any variables that you needed to control? Now, this is where you have to really think like a scientist. Let's say you look at the political speeches from the two presidential candidates. Say you're looking at Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Well, you probably can't analyse their entirety of the speeches, so you need to keep your variables under control. I need to think about um, maybe looking at the openings and the closings to the speeches. That's fair, isn't it? At the same time, you can't really look at a speech Donald Trump is making about COVID-19 and a speech that uh, Biden is making about uh, health care or payments for healthcare. You know, the two things aren't really the same. So, again, your variables, you might only be controlled by the same topic. So just make sure you try and keep these variables under control. Speak to your teachers about this if you're struggling with this particular one. Yeah, see, I could just come up with loads of different examples here, but it might not be relevant to yours. I'd rather you just check that with your teacher. Are my variables in control here? So that's data collection. Second thing is linguistic methods. Now, the first thing, are you taking a qualitative or quantitative approach to analysis? I'll be honest with you, you should be doing both. Let's remind ourselves of what it means. A quantitative analysis means that you should be doing some forms of totals, where so you can provide graphs and tables for things. Qualitative is analytical approach, so where you're really, uh, with in terms of quality analysis, explaining what you see there. So you're going to be doing both of those. Secondly, the big one really is number two. Which linguistic features will you analyse and why? Are you focusing on sentence types? Are you focusing on speech functions? Are you focusing on noun usage? I don't know because I don't know what you're all investigating. But that is something that you're going to want to decide upon, again, possibly by using your teachers. We are the best resources you've got. So use us uh, and talk to us about what you think is really interesting in your data. It might be the case that you've looked at your data and you've seen things you think are interesting, but you don't know what actually is interesting about them. You don't know linguistically what it is. So explain to us what you think it is. We might be able to give you the linguistic labels to go with that. So you might think it's... Um, it's a few things that a person's saying in yours, and we might, might, might be able to say, oh, look, they're using the passive voice. So tally up active voice versus passive voice. 
you could email us with those things or even better if you could set up teams chats with us one-to-one -one teams chats you can cover so much more in a verbal conversation than you can cover in an email exchange okay third thing which linguistic theories will you use to evaluate your findings so you need to know your theories really well for whatever topics you're actually exploring here if it's a language and gender one which people always go for in large numbers then which theorists are you planning to use so that's your data collection that's your linguistic methods let's take a moment to look at some examples this is a one that's been written by the exam board and annotated by the exam board have a pause and read the exam board's comments on this then when you're done press play and we will continue Hello everyone, welcome back. You can probably see how they have followed the basic premise of what I've said here. How did you collect your data? And why? And variables? And how are you going to go about analysing it? There's not much really in terms of number two here, is there? What linguistic features will you analyse and why? It's good on all the other areas. Right, we're going to be looking at the same three investigations that were focused on for your introduction and we're going to be focused on what some of our year 13s this year did. So let's go back and remember the televangelists. How do the televangelists Kenneth Copeland and Jesse Duplantis use language and power to manipulate their audience? Okay, pause this and read it. Remember you've got it in a Word document as well and you can write all over it. What is this doing well? Press play when you're ready to get back to me. Okay, so this one talks about how the data was collected, gives a little bit of context to the data, brings in a theorist there uh, with Martin Jews, not particularly uh, challenging use of theory there. It gets good when it talks about the language choices used by focusing on Copeland's um, use of modal verbs, uh, deontic modal verbs over epistemic modal verbs, and then Copeland and Duplantis manipulation of semantics. If I was to nitpick here, I would say, well, what exactly are you focusing on? Are you focusing on Kenneth Copeland or Copeland and Duplantis together? So I can see that this is a decent uh, methodology, but there are some flaws within it for that particular reason, but it's still setting itself up well. It's clear what she's going to be analysing. Right, let's go on the Great British Bake Off one now then. Pause the video, get back to me when you're ready to hear my comments. Hello everyone, welcome back. So as we can see, this one is very much like his introduction was. It's really concise and to the point, isn't it? He's got a gift of, um, of using 10 words when many people use 30 words. Very skillful writing here. Not particularly elaborate, not much fun, but really precise. It's what we want. Um, he brings in all the language factor features we would expect to do at the end there, where he lists them, the things he's going to be focusing on. I think I maybe I would ideally like him to explain the reasons behind the use of these particular things. But we're aware of word counts being a factor, so that is something. What I think he's really good at in this bottom half here is explaining how he controls his variables. Uh, up here as well where he talks about the, the part that he chose, the technical challenge, and then down here when he talks about the episodes that he's chosen. Okay, we'll go on to our final one, which is the uh, gender study into, um, into women's rights campaigns, women's rights protests. Pause the video, get back to me when you're ready for my feedback. Okay, everyone, welcome back. Does the job really well, doesn't it? Paragraph one really clearly about um, about data collection and paragraph two about the linguistic methods and the focus that they're going to have on those. No bringing in of theorists at this point, but it's like I said about the previous one. It's the case of word count sometimes, isn't it? You can't cover everything and we had to edit these an awful lot. Some things went in, in, into introductions that I'd like to have seen in methodologies. They're three really strong methodologies. I'm reading this one here and thinking could do with a little bit more precision in what it's doing in places, but I'm still viewing at least, at very least at the upper end of the B grade, these two really setting themselves up for very good investigations. This methodology is really good on variables and this one again talks a little bit of, a bit about variables and is really good on the language side of things. So that's what we need to do for our methodologies. Be really precise, follow the stages, data collection, linguistic methods, and you'll be right. If you go over the word counts, you're worried about your word counts, don't worry too much about it. We edit down as we go. 
and you will learn as you go on things that you started in your methodology might not be in there by the end. Okay, that's everything from me. Hope you found this useful. Next time, we'll be on to the analysis, the big one.